Let's start. And I'd like to welcome all of you to the second annual Constitution Day at the Maryland Institute College of Art. My name is Robert Merrill. I'm part of the group that organized this event for a second uh, year in a row. I'd like to uh, thank a few of our sponsors. First of all, the Academic Affairs Office at the Maryland Institute, um, in particular Chris Whitty and Ray Allen. I'd also like to thank Women for Mutual Security uh, for their support and for the uh, to thank the uh, Maryland chapter of the National Lawyers Guild. Uh, also, I'd like to thank Red Emma's uh, that has a book table upstairs. Um, so I'm often asked why an art school is sponsoring a Constitution Day, especially with such serious subjects like international law and separation of powers. And my response really is to be shocked by the question. I, I've always found artists to be interested in everything, and artists to have maybe even a greater concern than the general public for uh, human rights and civil rights, especially things surrounding the idea of expression. Artists like to test the limits of law and uh, expression. And so talking about the Constitution and talking about what uh, areas of their lives are protected is just important to them, even though they sometimes don't uh, talk about it directly. I'm also concerned about just the nature of college education. Uh, there is a new report out by the Department of Education, the Spellings Report, which wants to make education more career-focused and utilitarian. And I think really what college does is not only train people to pursue a profession, but it's also about civics education. It's about creating people as full human beings, people who can play a role in the societies that they're going to live in for the next 60 years or so. And one of the things is to make you the kind of citizen that knows what your rights are and knows what the limits of government are, are and pursues those with all the diligence that you possibly can. So I wish all schools were doing a Constitution Day. Um, they're not, um, but I wish that all of them would. In fact, they're supposed to. Um, a year ago, Senator Robert Byrd from West Virginia attached an amendment to the uh, defense appropriations bill saying that all educational institutions which receive federal money are supposed to provide some kind of educational program on the Constitution every year on the birthday of the Constitution. And the birthday, of course, was yesterday, September 17th, but we celebrate it today because it's one of those holidays you don't celebrate on a weekend. Um, not too many schools are doing that, and I, I wish they all would. When we found about found out about the idea, thanks to John Lippitz, um, who works here. Um, we, we thought it was a natural, we had to do it, and I hope we'll continue to do it as long as, um, as at least I'm here. Um, if you don't know anything about Robert Byrd, um, you should. He's a very interesting senator. He's been in the Senate since sometime in the 1940s. Um, he knows how government works, and he's in a sort of state of panic right now because he realizes that we're losing something in America that we once had. He wrote a book a couple years ago called Losing America, Confronting a Reckless and Arrogant uh, President. He thinks our country is out of control and it's lawless. And if you've paid any attention to the news uh, recently, I think you will agree. And I think some of the speakers who uh, are going to talk today will help bring that, uh, bring that point out. And for Byrd, the only way to reverse that trend is for people to become educated. You know, what kind of government do we have in the United States? What is it legal and what is it not legal for elected officials to do? Um, Byrd's concerned that there's almost no congressional oversight anymore about what the executive branch does. One of our panels today will talk about the separation of powers. And it's almost as if Congress and the courts don't have much of a role anymore. Although I have to say, in the last couple of months, there's been two really important uh, court cases, one in the Supreme Court and one in the District Court of, Federal District Court of, of Michigan that have been, I think, exemplary. Uh, last year, one of our speakers, David Cole of Georgetown University, talked about uh, the rule of law. And we hear all the time from our politicians, especially President, President Bush, talking about bringing the rule of law to nations around uh, the world. And one of the essential uh, characteristics of the rule of law is equity, that the laws apply in the same way to everybody. Everyone is subject to the same laws without any exemptions. And we're now listening, or we're now, we now if we listen to the news or read the news, we're, we're hearing about Congress cutting out some exemptions for certain 
American government officials, especially the CIA, to laws like the 1996 War Crimes Act, an act which um, made violations of the Geneva Conventions subject to American criminal law. But there's certain people, the CIA members, who would be exempt from that law. Or we're trying to exempt our armed forces and the CIA from the Geneva Conventions in total. And to go back to Bird's point, unless Americans understand what the Geneva Conventions are, then they may not understand why it's so important that these laws be applied equally to everybody. Um, the Geneva Conventions were passed in the wake of World War I and with the memory of World War II to prevent a catastrophe like those two wars from happening again. They strictly control how prisoners of war have to be treated, and they strictly control how civilians and non-combatants are treated. They separate war from its effects on non-combatants. Um, we all know, of course, if you read very much about what happens in war, that the greatest victims of war are not combatants, but they're the, the weakest members of any society, particularly women and children. Soldiers can move quickly, they can hide, they can get out of the way of bombs, but if you're a mother with three or four or more small children, you can't move. You, you have to stay right where you are, and when the buildings collapse, uh, you are in trouble. Um, but I did just want to make a couple of points. Um, you know, the Geneva Conventions are very, very important, and if you erode one area of them, you will eventually unravel all of them. And I think some of our guests will talk about that in more detail than I can do. And I just have one final uh, point, that we're being asked to strike a bargain these days. We're being asked to trade some of our rights um, and some of the rule of the law away in exchange for the feeling of safety. If you listened to any of the news coverage in the last week or two about the, on the anniversary of September 11th, the question was, do you feel safer now than you did before September 11th. And something like half of Americans said they did feel safer. But there's a big difference between feeling safer and being safer. And secondly, is this a good bargain? Should we be trading away those uh, legal institutions for, um, for the feeling of safety or the perception of safety?